Julian Barnett from London, standing in a very, very quiet Cloisters of Westminster Abbey. Let me tell you a little bit about what Cloisters are and a really brief history of the Abbey because I'm going to be taking you back to the Abbey at some later stage. Follow. Cloisters are normally associated with abbeys and cathedrals. They are a section of buildings, a collection of buildings at the side of an abbey where the monks used to meditate, used to pray, used to study. If you look out this way, you can see the cloister square. So cloisters would normally, not always, but normally have four sides where the monks would be able to walk around the central quiet square to do whatever activities they were doing. Now remember, Westminster Abbey is, was, and is a primarily an abbey church. It is what's called a royal peculiar in that it is under direct control of the monarch. So these are the cloisters of the abbey. The abbey will look at another day. I just want to show you this very beautiful place. The cloisters have four sides and it is remarkably lucky that these are so quiet. Although I should say that the cloisters of Westminster Abbey are one of the secrets of London because lots of people go to the abbey. They pay to go to the abbey quite handsomely worth every penny because it is an absolutely extraordinary place. But people miss two things attached to the abbey, the cloisters and the gardens. So there's a little tip for you. Get to these places all in good time, in your time. The cloister walls are absolutely plastered with memorials. The cloister floors are plastered with either sepulchres to mark the burial spots well below or the actual burial places themselves. So this is a history rich place. If you take a look this way, looking east, you can see a most spectacular view. That is of the Victoria Tower of the Houses of Parliament. Now I want to say something about that. The Victoria Tower is 323 feet high. The flag used to fly at the top of the tower whenever Parliament was sitting, but um, six years ago uh, the protocol was changed and now the flag always flies from the top of the Victoria Tower. That Victoria Tower is a remarkable thing because it is a library containing the manuscripts of every single Act of Parliament. Because remember, when Acts of Parliament are written, they're written on vellum and then they are stored away. And that tower there, the Victoria Tower, is the storage for all the Acts of Parliament going all the way back to about a thousand years. Talking of a thousand years, let me just carry on with something about the Abbey. The Abbey was founded by Edward the Confessor, the only English monarch um, to be given the title Saint. Um, Edward the Confessor founded the place, but the real Abbey proper was built in its entirety by Henry III. Elizabeth I was heavily involved in it as well, and the first full-scale coronation as we know it to be held in the Abbey was that of William the Conqueror. Christmas Day 1066. There have been coronations before, but in the format that we normally know, Christmas Day 1066. Remember, the Conqueror had taken England at the Battle of Hastings in October, just two months before, but it took him some time to get to London to control the area of the south of England, and on Christmas Day itself, he is here in the Abbey. Every single coronation since William the Conqueror's of every single English monarch has been held in the Abbey. Let me take you a little further around the other side of the cloisters. You can see here um, one of the main entrances to the side of the abbey. So we're now looking um, at the south side, the south side of the abbey, um, and I'm going to take you round the south cloisters uh, and point out a couple of things there. South side, looking north. Just look at the layers of history that we're looking at. Firstly, look at these incredible vaults in the actual roof of the southern part of the cloisters. High vaults reflecting the very very high vaults within the abbey uh, which one day we'll get to. But now south side looking north here and you can see there um, you've got here late medieval cloisters, you've got over there further part of the cloisters and above part of the old abbey buildings where the monks used to live when this was a real working abbey. The main institution attached to Westminster Abbey now is in fact Westminster School, a school that was founded by Elizabeth I in the 1550s. And Westminster School is still one of the premier schools in the country. And Westminster School shares some of the courtyards of the abbey. And when we leave, I'll show you a little bit about that. Onwards, because I now want to show you 
something really remarkable. How about this for a London scene? You've got stained glass windows um, made out of bits and pieces of glass. If you look closely at those windows, although they seem to be one composite picture, they're not. They're little, little bits and pieces of windows um, which are just pulled together from lots of old broken windows. All the stained glass was taken out of here during the Second World War in case there was blitz damage and then a lot of it was put back. Um, but if you now look this way, once again, we see another side of the cloisters, but now look beyond. Cranes in the distance, building a building now, early 21st century. I mean, it's a classic sort of snapshot of London, from the medieval to the Tudor glass, um, out towards something being built right now, within metres of the Abbey, this ancient institution. Now to the chapter house. Chapter houses were really important um, institution or really important part of the organization of abbeys and cathedrals and it comes it means the chapter the head of something so the chapter of an abbey or a cathedral institution was the committee the group of people that were in charge of the day-to-day -day and also the long-term strategic running of the institution itself chapter houses tend to be circular or octagonal so that everybody could see each other in meetings they would sit around the outer edge and they could talk about what was going on this is the wonderful medieval vault leading into the chapter house and it really is a wonderful thing to behold a lot of the stonework um, is really gradually seeping away a lot of visitors great age and so on one of the secrets of the chapter house is the oldest door in england come and have a look at this now it's a bit of a big claim i know um, but who knows it is old it is really old and I just want to point this out to you there is actually a little um, things here saying Britain's oldest door most likely constructed in the 1050s for St Edward the Confessor's Westminster Abbey and there is the door the door has a terrific history we could have an entire little session on the history of this door um, but it has survived. It was seen as something really remarkable, even a century or two ago, when the Victorians were often throwing out lots of our medieval heritage. But this survived through the centuries. There are records, in fact, taken when it was very properly studied in the 1930s, that there were traces of human skin on the inside of the door, which had actually lined the door many centuries ago. What we're now looking at are a pretty dramatic series of flying buttresses. These are the um, pieces of masonry that literally seem to fly out from those huge supporting columns on the side of the abbey. Flying buttresses were actually developed in France in the Gothic period and they were designed to do exactly what you see they are doing now, to support huge, huge walls that otherwise might well have fallen down. Possibly the most famous and most elegant flying buttresses are in Notre Dame in Paris. But flying buttresses became commonly used in lots of cathedrals in England. Salisbury, Norwich, Westminster Abbey, Ely and many others have flying buttresses to do their work and they do it very well indeed. What's quite unusual about the Westminster Abbey flying buttresses is that you have one, two, three, four layers of them, such as the height of the abbey, because Westminster Abbey, although I suppose is the, you know, seen as the archetypal um, English ecclesiastical institution, is in fact, for all intents and purposes, a French medieval church. That long, thin, soaring nave, almost all windows at the side. So if you have so much glass at the side, which, which is attempted to support so much masonry, you've got to have flying buttresses to do their work as well. And this is a spectacular view of the southern side elevation of the abbey. So now we are in the last of those four sides of the cloisters. And I mentioned to you before that there are so many memorials, monuments, graves of all different descriptions. Let me just point out a couple um, because they are really, truly wonderful things. This is one, a very unusual one. Edmund Haley as in Halley's Comet, 1656 to 1742. So here it says, the first to predict the return of the comet named after him, second astronomer royal, fellow and secretary of the Royal Society. So sponsor of Sir Isaac Newton's Principa and editor of Philosophical Transactions. Um, the whole wall 
on all sides are just filled with the great and the good, from scientists to people of literature, um, to clerics, to journalists, to military people, to diplomats, to sports people. It is literally a four-sided, walled history of this country and the things that this country has done through the centuries. What you're looking at um, is the rear of the two towers on the west front of the Abbey. These are interesting because they are much more recent than the Abbey. I've mentioned to you that the Abbey is, in essence, a 10th, 11th century institution, and the main fabric of the building is a 12th and 13th um, institution. But the actual towers themselves are much more recent. They were designed by Nicholas Hawksmoor um, around about 1712. Nicholas Hawksmoor was the chief architect of Christopher Wren. Christopher Wren, um, of course, the architect of St Paul's Cathedral and many, many other churches in the city of London and beyond. Nicholas Hawksmoor was his chief student. And I'm going to be taking you to a number of Hawksmoor churches um, in coming podcasts. Hawksmoor got the commission to build 50 churches around London uh, according to the 50 Churches Act of 1710, of which only eight were built because the government ran out of money. Of those eight Hawksmoor churches, only six are standing. And I'm going to be showing you those in due course. But these towers are interesting because Hawksmoor was given the commission to really, really revamp and upgrade Westminster Abbey, which is exactly what he did. And in a way, those towers are the most instantaneous thing that people use to recognise the Abbey as the Abbey. Yet, ironically, they are 700 years or 650 years younger than the main fabric of the Abbey. And finally, before we leave, um, something a little more light-hearted. Cut. Where else, other than London, would you have the entrance to the toilets of the cloisters and of the Abbey under a 14th century archway. I think it's a fantastic touch um, and it typifies really the marriage of the modern with the old and indeed the respect for the old, that old things are used and are put to practical purposes in as mundane a thing as going to the toilet at the end of a visit to Westminster Abbey cloisters. And so it's goodbye to the cloisters of Westminster Abbey um, and um, I would strongly urge you to come. It's the most wonderful place to see, especially on a magical Sunday afternoon where we bumped into three people in half an hour. Do it. Get there. It's fantastic. Thank you.